what you've pulled up here tonight is fantastic. It's going to be a good old knees up as well after the oh, QA, yes. I'm sure. Only here in the northeast. We're Geordies. In, we're Geordies. Geordies. She's a PA 
appeared in loads of stage productions and TV shows, including When the Board Comes In, Catherine Crooks and Phillips, and Amina St. Pet, where she played the part of Tim Healy's sister. In real life, she is the actual sister of Jimmy Nail. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you 
these are women. These are, these are my questions. Wait, then you can ask them. I need an hour. I need an hour. Why pick two mutton's to play the part of two lads obsessed with bloody Newcastle United. What's the price? Um, they wanted somebody jolly enough for the jollies, but not too jolly for Southerners. So they interviewed a lot of people like the side of that. Some of that is maybe more acceptable for the Southerners. <laughs> So they wanted to, uh, to kind of appeal to a wider audience, um, which is pretty much what you said. Really. But yeah, so they just wanted someone with a bit of a softer accent. Yes, that's why they chose you. I suppose we're going to throw that question into a second question, which was originally called The Season Ticket by Jonathan Tullow. Um, now, the movie was going to be called Season Ticket originally, because that's what's on the front of the original script. Why change the name? Yeah, again, that's the same same reason, more or less. Um, season tickets was um, sort of built as a football film, but the storyline is more centered around the stories of Jerry and Sue and their kind of life. So it was um, decision, the decision was made to change it to purely about it because it's still like a, a big jolly term, and uh, it just means sort of mint, really. Isn't it? It's like a hype, coffee, from that bed, and I. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, not exactly that. But, uh, as Charlie said, it was uh, it was a timing issue. If purely felt that had a six month window, maybe a 12 month window, and was released a little bit later on, I think it would have been a, a completely different success. Uh, but unfortunately, when you, they ran them both parallel, within about a month of each other, they were released. Um, Billy Elliot went north, and we sort of plateaued and then dropped off really quickly. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's funny because tonight this is this is absolutely fantastic. And ladies and gents, before we go any further, big round of applause for Chris because he's just absolutely wonderful. So it's not like the director that says, yeah, pull it back. It's other people that go, no, we don't think that'll make it. So they literally then don't send it, don't show it, and they just have a little limited distribution, and then they, they pull it back because they think, we'll, we'll stop the money before we'll, we'll lose any on it. Good, good answer. Very good, very clear answer. Can I do a PS to that? Uh, Billy Elliot was backed by the BBC, and uh, was headline news when it was released. Uh, you know. That's my point here, do the maths. Yeah, it was run as a headline, like it was run as like this is a, a major event uh, and purely but it wasn't picked up by anyone and didn't have that kind of news headline sort of release about it. Uh, yeah, so yeah, that's you that point. Hi, go on here, put anybody else? Go, go on. Oh, yeah, if we're doing thanks, right? Thanks to all of you guys for turning up as well. Right, give yourself a round of applause. Thank you for coming out for all of you. Well, you, you were in for quite a, quite a bit of the movie as well. Have, have you got any, uh, any moments of the, the film or anything that went a little bit wrong backstage or anything? Have you got any, have you got any, uh, have you got any gossip for? <laughs> no, I haven't got any uh, gossip, but um, I thought it was very funny that I had to hand over tickets for Sunderland because my whole family are Newcastle United supporters. <laughs> <laughs> then they have season tickets, and um, <laughs> it was just ironic that, it, that I ended up handing over a couple of tickets for the opposition. <laughs> <laughs> but in real life, just clarify, you wouldn't mix up your custom sort of movie. Absolutely not. Definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> Tim, have you got any, uh, any, any funny stories from, uh, from Phil Hill? Well, I've got some sort of poignant memories of it. When I sang that song, you know, you've got this complete horrible piece of work. Singing a beautiful song, I, you know, who, who was giving his boy nothing. And we, we played it actually in this pub and we didn't use extras. Uh, the people sat in the pub were actually uh, locals. <laughs> so, of course, when I arrived, I thought, Tim, I'll be getting to my wife. Oh, he's in the back of my life. Where's Jimmy? Where's Jimmy? Where's Jimmy? <laughs> he's on the roof getting the lead. <laughs> and all this, all this, and of course, I start singing, oh, he's singing, he's smashing, he's new to me. He's singing, smashing, he goes in. And Fuck <laughs> <laughs> That's the one of the things about television because you knew how real it was going to be when we watched this bastard <laughs> sing this beautiful song. But That's one thing that will always stay with me. <laughs> That's a great story. Well, there you go, there you go. Great story. Well done. Did Jerry and Sewell actually in real life, did they? Uh, did Chris and Greg actually ever get a season ticket? And if so, for which football team? <laughs> uh, no, is the short answer to that for me. Um, if you were going to buy a season ticket for a football team, do you know what? I'm going to get rich. Hey, he's got it. I, uh, I really watch the matches, if I'm being honest. I'm not really a big football fan. So there we are. I'm probably going to get Lynch. I'm going to get bottles thrown at us now, but there we are. 
Um, I've actually got family that live in Kent, um, and they're all Chelsea supporters, so I've been brought up on, uh, on Chelsea. Two years of trying, had to film, but it didn't work out, so I walked away, did 
That's where the job work at school at the moment. School? Smart. Yeah, teacher training. Have you shown the kids purely belt lads? You look like me, that. One. <laughs> one lucky sixth form I got in on the secrets. <laughs> he swore on the secrets here. With those year 11s, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I like what we were living. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, what's your what's name again? Because I'm going to post up the video link, uh, the trailer on the Facebook page. It's a little known high school in Leeds. In Leeds, right? That's not right from every Leeds yeah. high school. Facebook. <laughs> 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 Listen, I think I've asked the questions that I want to ask. Um, so, can we, yes, we'll open, we'll open up the floor. Check it out nice so that we'll repeat it back. Chris Beanie. Hello. She <laughs> wanted to talk she was caught and I didn't really mean it. That sounds tempting, I guess. <laughs> The actual scene where we filmed is uh, in the, the training ground. Um, that wasn't Shearer's car. It was, uh, I think, it was like Reg Barney's son's car. Or something at the time. Yeah. You know, Reg Barney, the old uh, big dealership. It was, it was his son. And then, uh, unfortunately, I wasn't allowed to drive it. Um, they had a, a stunt double to, to kind of spin it out the car park because I, um, I was too small. I was, I was too young for size. But uh, my feet actually didn't reach the pedals. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. How did you get away with driving the way up the A1 then? Well, little, little industry secret for you here. It was actually on the back of a lorry. So it looked like I was driving, but it was on the back of a lorry. So, yeah, funny games. Right? Questions? You say, please go. Um, yeah, message with Greg actually. Greg? That scene when, uh, when he smacks away his dark post. Yeah. <laughs> was it planned? No, absolutely planned, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, no, it was. Um, no, I mean, we, we practiced it a bit the first time, and I had me pin my, uh, pin my right in the middle of my chest, and that really hurt that first time. I walked into it. We did it three or four times after that, and then we had to reshoot because Dan was walking in out of character in the background, they were shopping down the high street. <laughs> Like, no, 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 I know we might Any questions for any, any, anybody else in the cast? Yes, sir? Uh, Tim, your singing is beautiful. Can you do another rendition? Tim, your singing is beautiful. Can you do another rendition? What's the most uh, popular thing people say it is? When you, when you are well known or whatever. And, and what I get is I didn't know you could sing. <laughs> Where did you know? If I sing. But I love singing like anything, you know. And it was great to be given that chance to show it off. It's a beautiful song, you know. Sung by the worst bastard in the world, that's. <laughs> not Elvis Presley. No, he's not the worst. He's great. But sung by the
to all the spare change I've done for charity. Are you? Aye. Right, every your pocket this night is for charity. And without swearing, give us some fucking money. <laughs>
The weirdest place I've ever, ever been recognised is um, hanging upside down on a roller coaster in Alton Towers. <laughs> There's someone behind us like, hey, are you a Jerry from Purely Not Someone was actually from Newcastle. <laughs> and that's, yeah, that's just funny. So, there we are. Any more questions about the film? We'll take the last three questions, eh? Yes, sir. How? How gross, that's quite an American word. How pure minging was that mood you were knocking about in before you went to see Kinder? Uh, yeah, that was an unpleasant morning of filming, yeah. I mean, Chris was sat nice, dry, clean, on his little boat. And then, yeah, it stank. It really stank. And I fell back, hair back in the mud, I looked to my left, two foot were dead rats. But, oh, no. But the, uh, yeah, they actually, they went down with some of the crew guys to prep the area and he got in to do the test shots and they couldn't get him out. They had to get the fire brigade to come out and winch him out. So that's a layer, like a metal gangway underneath so I had something stable set up otherwise I'd have gone. <laughs> okay, two more questions, please. Anybody? Yeah, you got one? Oh, well, that's great, that's great. Thanks for coming there, thank you. What are you up to at the minute then? Have we got any exciting projects coming up now? Go and ask you all, okay? Yeah. I've just on Sunday finished two months doing Peter Pan at the Alhambra in Bradford, and this week I've been working <laughs> on a classic Spanish loca play called The House of Bernarda Alba. So I've gone from the ridiculous to the sublime, all the sublime the ridiculous, I'm not sure, but it's really nice to be back home after I've been here. Uh, I, so same as, same as Charlie, I've just finished pantomime at the Titan Theatre, we did a Beauty and the Beast. And we're already, that was the beast, unfortunately. Uh, no, I get the pleasure of playing the Duff character every Christmas. Uh, we've already started for next year, so this year, uh, next year, it's this year now, Christ, how, how fast time flies. Um, we're doing Wizard of Oz at Easter with Bobby Dabro and Ashley and Putty from Britain's Got Talent. And we're doing Snow White um, at Christmas at the time here, so if you're around, pop down, come and see me. Uh, and thanks again for everybody coming tonight. Thanks. I just do tattoos every day. <laughs> every day. Every day I tattoo. I work hard. I work fucking hard. I saw it off here. I saw it off Yeah, been a pleasure. Well done to everybody here. Well done to you lot as well. Cheers, thank you. Well, I spend most of my time with my two little granddaughters. <laughs> One's six and the other one's three. And it's, I, I can't tell you how wonderful it is to be a grandma. Um, in the business as well, um, last year I did uh, a run through of a, a new musical about uh, Sissy Charlton, the mother of the Charlton brothers. And um, I played Sissy. And I'm hoping that uh, this is going to come off at some point um, because it's so much about the Northeast and uh, it's just a lovely piece of work. So look out for it, it'll be called Sissy. Funny name from Bradbury, six and three. <laughs> I'm just uh, glad to be here. I was for a year last year, and, uh, and uh, yeah, I've, got a, I've got a wonderful woman that I've been married to for a year, and she kept me alive, basically, and uh, really looked up to me. She's up there, Joe. And, uh, and I'm back. To worry a bit and then, whoa, off you go, and uh, I'm doing better at home again. Yeah. Let's go! And then, uh, 
September still open all hours. We're up there in Dastrid with a lovely David Jason. So, uh, other than that, I'm just so happy to be here. Yeah, I just think this is a it. beautiful, charming, wonderful film about humanity and care of this beautiful part of the world, the northeast of England. And it's well, been, we should be so proud of it. Right. And that's why I'm here. Uh, yeah, just to elaborate on uh, earlier, really, um, did bike and go for a couple of years with the lovely Charlie, um, Charlie Harvey, and um, did some theatre work for a couple of years. Uh, I've been singing for 12 years, I still do the North East pubs and clubs, and I, uh, I do weddings and things like that. Um, and recently filmed a, a couple of commercials as well for um, a North East um, Window Company, which is currently being shown on ITV. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's, that's me in a nutshell, still plotting on with the acting, you know, if uh, some future projects come up, then of course it's going to be a big bonus, so still at it. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you.